new videos every day. So I've done some videos on pop culture icons, and what could be more popular than the cheerleader? What would sports be without them? Without their short skirts and their pom-poms jumping energetically up and down for their team? Ch cheerleaders are dancers, tumblers, gymnastics, and what could be more sexy than a girl doing all of those things in a short skirt as well? Well, believe it or not, cheerleaders have not always been sexy. The idea of a cheerleader being sexy has only been around for the last 30 years. So this wouldn't be a cool video without lots of pictures of cheerleaders. So if you clicked on this video to see lots of pictures, that's exactly what you're going to get. There's going to be lots of pictures of cheerleaders. But first, let us talk a little bit about the history of cheerleading. I'm a college girl and I study sociology, anthropology, and the evolution of the pop culture icon. Today we are going to be talking about the pop culture icon of the cheerleader. What is the history of cheerleaders and how did they become so sexy? So cheerleading actually goes back to the late 1800s. And believe it or not, it was actually invented by a dude. But there was this football game between Princeton University and the University of Minnesota. And there was, wasn't any cheerleading, but there were people cheering. And there was this guy, Thomas Pebbles, who organized cheering within the crowd so that they all could cheer together. He came up with this idea, but cheerleading didn't start there. So later on in 1898, a guy named Johnny Campbell of the University of Minnesota led the first crowd in an organized cheer. So you get the idea, the idea of a cheerleader, somebody who leads the crowd in a uniform cheer all together so that everyone in the crowd is shouting the same thing at the same time. You need a leader in order for that to happen, hence a cheer leader. The first cheerleading organization began in 1903 and it was a fraternity. That's right, the first cheerleading organization was all male. Women didn't even begin to start participating in cheerleading until 1923. So cheerleading nowadays is much different than what it was back then when it was all male. Now, 97% of cheerleading participants is women, not men. But when you get into the collegiate cheerleading, then it's 50-50. Half guys, half women. So starting in the early 1900s and moving forward, the idea of cheerleading became really popular in universities and eventually in many high schools. And during this time, the idea of wearing a uniform altogether became popular. But at this point, it was long skirts and there were still lots of guys and those pom-poms. So it still wasn't very sexy. And it wasn't going to become sexy until it became commercialized. In 1960, the National Football League began to organize professional cheerleading teams. The Baltimore Colts, now the Indianapolis Colts, were the first NFL team to have a professional cheerleading squad. So these professional NFL cheerleaders were still not sexy. They were still the same kind of cheerleaders that the universities had with the long skirts, still lots of guys. Cheerleading, even in the NFL, still wasn't sexy. It wasn't made sexy until the 1972. And guess who it was that made cheerleading sexy? The Dallas Cowboys. So just to give you an idea of how unsexy these first Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders were, here is a picture of the first original cheerleaders. You can see in this picture that the girl has pants on, there's lots of guys, there's no short skirts, there's no skin, there's no sex appeal in this picture. So how did this picture of this Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, totally unsexy, become what it is today? So Tex Schramm, the Cowboys general manager, not only was interested in football and sports, but he also had a background in television. And he knew that sports had not only just become sports, it was also sports entertainment. So he decided to take this idea of cheerleading and expand it, make it better. So what he did is that he hired some models to stand on the sidelines and be cheerleaders for the Cowboys. But that turned out to be a disaster. The cheerleaders were sweating and their makeup was falling off. They were complaining and, and Tex just decided this wouldn't work. But what about dancers? So what he did is he hired a lady, Texi Waterman. She was a head dancer at the time and she held an audition for the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. 
60 ladies showed up for this audition and only seven were chosen. That summer they trained, they trained in the hot summer heat along with the Dallas Cowboys and when the 1972-73 NFL season kicked off, they introduced their new sexy Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. So the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders became a sexual icon within themselves, and after that, other NFL teams began to do the same thing. And the, sh and the uniforms got shorter and shorter, more flashy, and college universities actually began to do the same thing. Now, since they were dancers to begin with, dancing became the lead focus. It wasn't about leading the crowd in and, and a cheer, it was more about showmanship, dance routines, and dazzling the crowd. So that's the history of how cheerleaders kind of became sexy. Now, let's talk a little bit about some interesting facts about cheerleaders, and I'll show you some pictures. Cheerleading has become very popular within female athletes in high school. Of the 2.9 million female athletes in the United States, only 3% are cheerleaders, so it's still very exclusive. Another fact, cheerleading is probably the most dangerous activity among high school activities, period. Just to give you an example, of the 3% of the athletes that are cheerleaders, they count for 65% of the most catastrophic dangerous accidents among high school athletes. So besides the dancing that was influenced by the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, there was a greater emphasis on stunts and gymnastics. And to give you an example of this, between the years of 1990 and 2002, the number of cheerleading accidents or injuries doubled. Also, in 2001, there were 25,000 hospital visits due to cheerleading-related accidents. So cheerleading has come a long way from just the crowd cheering, leading them on. It requires a lot of skills, dancing, gymnastics, coordination, flexibility, all of these things. And there's been a debate whether or not cheerleading could be considered a sport. Now I think, personally, that's a little ridiculous because of the amount of skill that is needed to be a successful cheerleader is, is amazing. And the, the fact that they're, they're getting hurt and there's so many injuries it just highlights the fact that it is a difficult and dangerous activity. But is it a sport? What do you think? So you know pom-poms, the cheerleading accessory that they use in their cheers? Well, this word pom-pom, it's, it's the word people use in general. We use it in the television, and the media. The word, though, is actually pom pon with an N. This is the word used by professional cheerleaders, coaches, cheerleading equipment manufacturers, pom pon But the word pom-pom has just been used incorrectly, mispronounced, and carried out, and just accepted as pom-pom instead of pon pon so another interesting fact is that cheerleaders wear short skirts, and guys always hope to get a little peek of cheerleader underwear. But to tell you the truth, it's not underwear at all. It's a pair of boy shorts that they wear over their underwear, and they call them lollies or spankies. Now spankies comes because it fits your body really well and makes your butt look spankable. But I'm not really exactly sure where lollies come from, I just know that it comes from lollipops. So there we are, a history of how cheerleading became sexy. Now, videos to come, we're going to be doing a video on cosplay, which is dressing up like cartoon characters or superheroes. And even though you might think that this is a Japanese thing, it actually started in America. Thank you so much for watching. Please rate my video, and we'll see you next time. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.